For this exercise, we're going to model a pendulum that is on a cart, an overhead crane. Okay, so a mass here. I'm going to call that mass two, and then the mass of the cart. And this cart can uh, move forward or back. What we want to do is go from position negative one over to position zero. Now, can you, you can imagine if you just did this uh, moving it over all at once that uh, this pendulum would then start to swing. Uh, so what we want to do is get it to move over here. Okay, there's our cart. And then have the pendulum perfectly um, perfectly stationary. Okay, so we want to do the coordinated moves here uh, of this crane or this cart, uh, this overhead cart that is moving uh, to be able to haul this mass over and have it be stationary at the stop point. Okay, so I'm going to come here to the uh, course website. Um, we want to design this model predictive controller with this custom objective function, okay, to satisfy a specific problem criteria. Okay, and, and in this case, um, we want to simulate this pendulum system with an adjustable overhead cart. Um, you know, it has these four equations, okay, where um, Y is going to be um, the motion in the uh, the horizontal direction, v is the velocity of that cart. Um, we have theta, which is the angle, and then q, which is the rotation rate of that uh, of that angle. Okay, and then u is going to be the force that we apply to the cart. And so you can see um, that it has a relationship with the uh, v dot and uh, q dot, and negative one for q dot, and then um, one for the coefficient on v dot equation. Okay, so we want to um, implement this and then design a model predictive controller to move this cart and then at the end of the time, in this case, it's going to be um, zero to uh, 6.2 seconds. Okay, we want it to move one unit over and then at that point um, have this mass at the bottom uh, be stationary. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do is go ahead and just um, create a model of this. And this model is going to be um, in the AP Monitor modeling language. What we're going to do is, um, you know, it's already given to us, but we need to create some parameters first. Let me go ahead and move this over. And so we can see the uh, model a little bit better. Okay. So there is our model. I'll make that just a little bit smaller. Okay, so uh, we have, first of all, our mass. That's going to be a mass of our cart. I just put that as uh, 10, and then mass 2, that's the mass of the object. Um, 2, which is uh, the pendulum. Okay, so um, first of all, we have U, um, which is the force that we can apply. That's going to be the degree of freedom for the optimizer. Okay, and then I also put in this, this final value because we just want, uh, we really don't care how it gets there. We just want it to be stationary and located at that particular place at the end. Okay, so we want all of these derivative values to equal uh, zero at the end, and then also um, for the location to have changed from negative one uh, to one. Okay, so we have a couple of variables. We have y. It's going to be a, have an initial condition of negative one. Uh, velocity initially is zero. Uh, we want the final condition to also be zero. Uh, theta is also initially zero. It means that the pendulum is just hanging straight down. And then Q, the rotation rate of that pendulum is also zero. Okay, we also have some intermediate equations. Um, and we have this epsilon right here, um, where uh, we're just gonna define that to be uh, mass two divided by mass one plus mass two. Okay, so if I come back over here to my model, there's my epsilon. And then in my equations, I'm just going to implement those four equations. Okay, so I have it in matrix form. I'm just going to multiply it out um, for all four of those. Now, the final thing I want to do is just implement this objective function. And I'll do that within the model. I'm not going to define these as controlled variables. Um, I could, but I can also just define uh, a minimize. Okay, now I'm going to do final times. Um, final times this quantity because I'm going to set final equal to zero until it becomes a final condition and then it'll be one. And so I'm going to be minimizing this all the way, but um, 
this is going to be zero until the time that I want this thing to be minimized. So I'm going to minimize y squared, v squared, theta squared, and q squared. So the minimum of those is going to be zero. I want to try to drive it to a, a zero value. Okay, then I also want to minimize um, the actuator movement. So if I can, I want to minimize the force that's applied uh, to this cart so I don't have erratic behavior of my, um, of my cart. Okay, so now let me go over to Python. I actually have it MATLAB and Python. I'll go ahead and do both of those. Let me first of all go ahead and set up this, um, this CSV file. This is the data file for our problem. I have my time. And I'm going to just do it in 0.1 uh, second increments. Okay, until I get to um, 6.2. Okay, that's when I want to arrive. And I also put in a few more just to make sure I'm going to be at uh, steady state that everything is stabilized. Okay, then I'm going to define this new variable final. Okay, so I define that in my uh, model file. Let me go ahead and just put that over here. Okay, so final. Um, I, I multiply that by my objective function. Okay, so I'm going to define that as zeros everywhere um, for this final, except for when I want it to be at steady state, and then I'll put some ones in there. Okay, um, and uh, let me go ahead and just save that. Okay, save it, and I'm going to save it as this uh, comma delimited or CSV file. Okay, I'll keep it in that format. Okay, so now I've, I've uh, saved it, I've created my model file. Now what I want to do is just go ahead and create my uh, script file as well. Um, let's go ahead and start with um, my MATLAB file. Okay, so first of all I just want to clear, um, clear everything um, that was there before. I'll add path to that APM library that you can include with this uh, download. Um, and then server and application name, there's my server and application name. I'll go ahead and clear the prior application. So anything that was named that application on that server, it'll go ahead and just um, clear all the files. So I'll start with a fresh application. And then I want to load in my uh, model file. That's the pendulum.apm that I just created. And then also my data file. Now make sure a lot of people, um, they use APM load. You got to do CSV load instead of APM load to do the data file. Okay, and then I want to change this to a value of 6. That's a control mode uh, or dynamic optimization. Okay, and then I want to classify um, this U value as a manipulated variable so I can turn its status on and make it a degree of freedom for the optimizer. Okay, so there I have um, this U value. Okay, it's, it, I'm going to be minimizing. Um, now I want to solve it, so I issue this APM command and then simply the uh, the solve command and then I put the output of that solver here and then display it. Okay, and then I just want to retrieve the solution. I use that APM at underscore SOL and then uh, here I have my server and application name and it returns the solution into the variable Y. And then I am just uh, have Y.X gives me the solution. I'll create a new figure just with a subplot. <coughs> First subplot, I'm going to plot my force uh, and just label that accordingly. I put the axis tight there just to get rid of any uh, blank space around uh, the the, uh, the numbers that are displayed on the plot. Okay, then second subplot, I also have my uh, variable y. That's the position. So let me go ahead and bring up this while we're... Um, so that's the position of the uh, cart. Okay, and um, as I continue through this, Okay, so let me um, also on the third one, I'll do the velocity. Okay, velocity. And uh, on the fourth subplot, I'll go ahead and do theta and also the Q value. So this will be kind of the rotation rate uh, with this fourth one. And um, then I th that concludes it. Okay, so same thing in Python. I'll just import my APM library, server application, clear my application, load my model and data, change it to dynamic optimization mode, define my manipulated variable. Okay, so same script that I had for MATLAB, just a little different uh, syntax for the Python, and then create my plot. Okay, so I've created um, my plots here. 
Okay, so I, uh, in this crane control, let me go and open this up with, um, I'll go do it in Python first. Okay, I'll edit it with IDLE. I can also just run this from the command line. And then when it runs, okay, let's see what the error is here. Okay, import uh, six. Hmm. No module name six. Okay, so apparently I, I have some uh, package I need to update. Okay, with my matplotlib. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Okay, we'll have to go back and fix that later. Um, let me open up the MATLAB. Okay, so these two should give us the same result. Um, I'll just have to figure out what's wrong with my matplotlib library. There's, I guess, a missing package called six in there. Okay, so when I run this, um, okay, so it's going to run it on the server, on this BYU server, and uh, and then return the results. And uh, what we'll have, okay, then in the final is, is uh, be able to plot this. Okay, so it took a half a second. It looks like it, like my network is a little bit slow. Um, but here are the results. And uh, let me go ahead and just um, save this and export it. And I'll go ahead and just export this to... Okay, so I'll go ahead and just export that to my desktop. Okay, as a PNG. Let's go ahead and talk about some of these results with the... Um, this overhead cart. Okay, I'll go ahead and close the MATLAB and then bring that back in here. Okay, so here are my uh, results that I produced with uh, MATLAB. So here's the force on the cart um, here on the left, and um, you can see that initially it um, you know, starts driving it over to the right. Okay, with a fairly large change in the force up, and then uh, it kind of coasts for a while, almost close to zero. And then here, uh, kind of at the midpoint, it almost does something exactly opposite. Okay, and uh, we didn't tell it to do that, but about 3.1 into it, you know, the final is 6.2. Um, it's almost a mirror um, opposite of it. <clears throat> you know, did the opposite, it went down and then back up and then stopped it okay so let's look at our cart position over time so we just let it decide what to do but by 6.2 we said we want those values to be zero uh, these values to be zero and then those values to be zero as well and along the way we wanted to try to minimize I think we put a small penalty on um, u squared as well that we penalize over the whole range. Okay, so we tried to minimize u squared. Um, but you can see the uh, angle and the rate of change. Okay, so initially it's swinging back and then uh, forward and it comes right to a, uh, a stop right there. Okay, with these coordinated actions of the, uh, <clears throat> of the force. Okay, so, um, so let's just go back and review what we did. Just a big picture overview of this. So we had uh, this cart and we moved it from negative one to position zero. And initially this was uh, velocity equals zero, theta equals zero, and Q equals zero. And uh, we moved it over and then it had those same uh, conditions where it was at rest, but just moved over um, to the new position. Okay, so uh, that, if you want to download these files, they're available. Um, come to the course website, and I'll just show you how to get there. Um, come to apminer.com, and then go to slash um, DO for dynamic optimization. <clears throat> and you can come down here to the control section, and it says PID, LQR, and MPC, introductory video, and then this exercise.